So today let's take a look at this amazing frequency meter as I promised in the last video. It's a vibrating reed frequency meter. It has some metal strips in it with some resonance frequency and those are resonating and showing the frequency. There are multiple strips and each of them has a different resonant frequency according to this scale and the one with the same frequency as the input voltage on those terminals will resonate and show the frequency on this scale basically. And there are basically some flexible metal strips and one end of it is connected to some support and the other end of it is free and it can resonate. And those ends are those. You can see the free end of it which is vibrating and they are different frequency which can be achieved by different length or also by a different weight on the end of it. Basically it can be calibrated using a different size of a blob of solder which can be removed or added for calibration. The heavier the lower the frequency and the longer the lower the frequency. So it can be for example like this and there is also a coil next to it connected to those terminals and according to the frequency of the voltage one of those strips will resonate. And here you can see the front of the resonating reed and when it's resonating up and down it looks longer. In operation it looks like this. For example when it's 50 Hz it looks like this and if the frequency is in between of two you can see something like this. So this is actually somewhere here which means 49.75 Hz. Those reads are half a hertz apart, but when two of them are resonating it means it's in the middle, so you can read it with about one quarter of a hertz resolution. This coil with an AC current in it is producing a vibrating magnetic field, but it makes the read resonate only if the mechanical resonance frequency of the read is very close to the frequency of the current in the coil. So only one of them or maybe two are vibrating and the other ones are not. But those reeds are probably just iron, not a magnet, so they are attracted to the coil in both half cycles. So their resonance frequency is probably double of the frequency in the coil. This is the current in the coil and the magnetic force is basically square of the current in the coil. The same is happening for example in universal motors or in analog meters which measure RMS current. But now let's take a look at it. It measures frequency from 48 Hz to 52 Hz. It's rated for 127 volts AC and it's made in Soviet Union in 1962. The resolution of it is not very good and also the range of it is very narrow, but it's quite an amazing device nevertheless. And it was apparently designed to measure the mains frequency, but nowadays the frequency of mains is controlled with quite a high accuracy, like 0.01 Hz. So this device would be absolutely useless to measure the deviation of the mains frequency nowadays. Maybe it was used to measure a frequency of a generator which is not connected to mains, an offline generator, or maybe it was measuring the frequency of the generator before connecting it to the mains, or maybe the mains frequency was quite inaccurate back then. Maybe in the 60s in Soviet Union the frequency was fluctuating like crazy. And it's designed for 127 volts. And the mains in Soviet Union probably was like this. It was a three phase mains and the transformer was like this. The voltage from one phase to the center point was 127 volts. And the voltage from one phase to another was 220 volts. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I guess that the transformer from the high voltage to the low voltage for customers was like this. So you could have appliances for 127 volts or 220 volts. But now of course you probably want to see it actually running. So let's test it. It has a coil probably in it, so it should have some resistance. Well. It doesn't work. 
They can't measure the resistance of the coil. So it seems like there is something wrong. There's time to take a look in it. There are three screws for a flat screwdriver because almost all Soviet devices have flat screwdriver screws in them. So let's open it and my cat is going to help me of course. As usually. Can I open it like this? Yes. So here you can see the metal strips, the reeds, with quite a lot of screws holding them. And from the other side, there's the electromagnet with this coil mounted on some core. And basically this coil is producing a magnetic field and it goes from here into those bars attracting those reeds. And of course the magnetic field has to make a full circle from the coil, through those reeds, through this, or this, back into the coil. And here you can see the terminals of the coil going from here into those screws. And here you can also see the weights on the reeds, which are probably blobs of solder. So it was probably calibrated by adding or removing some solder. So those are probably solder weights. And this is the tail of my cat. But unfortunately this coil looks rather dark. It looks like it overheated. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be this dark, almost black. But because it's open circuit it's probably gone. And I have a feeling that somebody connected a wrong voltage to it because in my country and in the entire Europe the voltage is 230 volts and this one is for 127 volts. Somebody probably tested it using European mains voltage and destroyed it. But sometimes windings fail for no external reason. They just develop a short turn. A short circuit between the turns of the winding. And then they overheat and the wire melts and they go open circuit. So let's try to disassemble it. There are three screws holding the core together. Can I open it? Does it come apart now? So here's the coil which unfortunately is open circuit. So let's take it out. Let's see the winding in it. It doesn't look bad. It's not burned. That's weird. But maybe this is the normal color of the isolation. The wire doesn't look burned. There is some glue on it, but the wire seems okay. But why it's open circuit? Maybe somebody dropped it and the wire broke? I don't know. So I probably have to unwind it to see what happened. Maybe it's burned somewhere in the center of it. So here's the winding which doesn't look burned. It probably broke because somebody dropped it. Because it went through a post. And there is definitely quite a lot of turns in it. So this is what I call a non-countable winding. It was just impossible to count the turns. So I just cut it, I took detailed pictures of it and it seems to be over 10,000 turns. It's impossible to count it. And from the pictures it seems like there is about 220 turns in each layer and there is about 50 layers. And this is about 11,000 turns per 127 volts and this is about 87 turns per volt. So now let's try to rewind it because the spool is okay. Here you can see the options. The first option is to rewind it for the European voltage, but this means about 20,000 turns, which is completely crazy. Of course you can do it using a drill or something, but at this high voltage there is also a risk of failure. 
I could also rewind it to the original voltage, but this is a completely useless voltage for me because the mains is different here. And the last option is to rewind it for some standard low voltage, like 6 or 12 volts. It would be 520 turns for 6 volts or 1040 turns per 12 volts. I will probably do it for 12 volts. I have to get some proper wire for it, but now let's do just a very temporary test using a random cable. This is really just temporary. It has to be done using a proper wire for windings, of course. Ok, so let's test it. So let's test it using a transformer. And it seems to do something. It's a bit off, but ok, it works. It shows about 50.25 Hz. And of course I can't run it for long because this wire is going to melt. The wire has a rubber isolation which can easily melt. And it also fills most of the space in it, so there is not much copper. And this is another reason why it's going to melt easily. Now I can't run it for long. I have to rewind it properly. Now let's measure the current. 3.6 amps. That's quite a lot. And the voltage is... 2.2 volts. And there is 50 turns in it, but of course the voltage per turn has to be higher now because the rubber fills most of the space and there is not much copper, so it has a high resistance and it drops more voltage. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course, in the next video I have to rewind it properly and test it using a variable frequency.